this is the be- be- biggest macro trade of all yep. time. It's yep. the best performing asset class in all history in the shortest period of time. Right. So you've got the gift. I don't want to hear anybody say we've been shut out because everybody can put 10% in. Everybody. Yep. Right. If you live in the Philippines or you live in Nigeria or you live in New York City, you can put 10% of your wages in. This is an egalitarian, democratic, global, homogenous asset class. And it is the biggest trending asset class of all time. So given that, it's pretty easy. It's just buy it and hold it. Crypto is the greatest macro trade of all time and is actually the best performing asset class in all of history. This means that investing in crypto assets such as Bitcoin could drastically change your life. This is the latest message out from macroeconomic expert Raul Paul. In his most recent interview, Raul shared his insights into the world of crypto and the wider ramifications of today's technological advancements. He believes that the biggest change to mankind and society is currently underway. Cryptocurrency, AI, robotics, genetic engineering, and energy technologies, these are the innovations that hold massive potential to disrupt society and the global economy. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Raul reveals the only thing we ever really need to do in crypto. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy staying up to date with finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Raul Paul with his insights on the impact of crypto and other technologies. So how I'm thinking this through is we talked about this is the biggest macro trade of all time. We're still in the middle of it. Yep. So great, focus. Yes, yep. you should be involved in technology. You should yep. be investing, if even just to learn, right? Yep. Because the biggest change to mankind and society is underway. Yep. And crypto is just a part of it. That's just like the transaction storage value layer of the internet. That's just a part of the whole story. The bigger things are AI, robotics, you know, genetic science, well, what that all unlocks and energy. And this formula that I talk about is the GDP formula. GDP formula is basically population growth plus productivity growth plus debt growth. Right. We stopped and blew up all debt growth in 2008. All debt growth now is just servicing of old debts. So really, the global economy and particularly the developed world has slowed down trend rate of GDP growth. Why? Because we've got an old, slow growing population and in many countries now shrinking. Italy, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. I mean, they're all starting to shrink now. Okay, so you've got lower population growth supporting this large debt. So there's not enough money to pay for the debt, which is why the central banks print stuff. But over time, you need to change that equation. Because if not, you know, we're not going to blow up because we keep... For us to blow up, which is what everybody fears, the value of collateral has to go down a lot, which is what happened in 2008. Yeah. But we've learned this new trick, debase the currency and optically the collateral goes up, right? You cannot go bust in that environment. So, okay, how the hell do we get out of this quagmire? Slow growth, aging population. The answer is, well, firstly, population growth. But nobody wants to open immigration because wages haven't gone up in real terms. So the more immigrants, the less money there is to share in the economic pie. So people are like, no, 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 we don't want that. So then comes AI. AI is infinite human knowledge, and it's going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper until it's water. So you scale knowledge at zero cost, which is the human brain, and above that, because that's where we're going. And then you've got the robots, which scales physical humans. So now we have infinite humans at an exponentially decreasing cost. Next, productivity. Productivity is basically the output per kilojoule of energy. If I look at UK electricity prices over the last 50 years, they're pretty stable. Like, sure, they're cyclical, but they're pretty stable. So with EV technologies, geothermal, wind, all of the stuff that we're working on, we know that they don't scale enough yet, storage problems, other stuff, but we know they're going exponentially lower in price and they're rising in output. And then we've got nuclear, what we can do with nuclear technology. So we are going to halve and maybe halve again the cost of electricity in the next 10, 15 years. What is that going to do? Well, think of productivity. If technology goes down half, productivity's doubled. If it goes down half again, 
productivity is tripled. So you're going to triple productivity while introducing infinite population. Right, so I get to a problem that I get to 2030. My job has always been to live in the future and I can't see what this is. This to me is an economic singularity where maybe all understanding of economies and economics completely breaks down. I may not be right, it may not be 2030, maybe 2035, might be 2020, I don't care. The point being is we are fast approaching this point. Also, we've got to understand that as AGI comes, and I think, honestly, I think OpenAI have got AGI, I think they are using it to build their business and their models and their everything which is why 500 people can out iterate everybody on earth. When everybody gets this, <laughs> the speed of disruption is gonna be like the meme coin cycle or the ICO cycle. What business lasts? Who gets disrupted by whom? How long do these disruptive cycles last? They could be hours, they could be days, they could be months, maybe a few years. We just don't know. We just don't know even what VC investing means in that environment. Do companies stay around long enough before they get disrupted? Or should they be tokenized so you can take, you can put money in and take money out on the time horizon that these businesses last? Because VC ain't gonna work. What does it mean once we've got AGI? What does it mean for markets? Once we've got something that can pretty much <coughs> process all of the data and all the understanding of markets and make investment decisions. What, is one person gonna figure this out and become the richest person that ever lived? And people aren't thinking this stuff through. They're, they keep talking about, well, it's gonna replace jobs. They're missing the bigger picture. This is beyond our understanding of anything that we do. It's wildly exciting and terrifying. So what I'm suggesting is you have six years to make as much money as you can because you have no <laughs> understanding what the world is gonna look like. And luckily we've been given the gift of an opportunity, which yeah. is A, we can inje invest in technology, more so we can invest in crypto. But beyond that, what is an asset management business? What is this conversation? I've already developing an AI that's my avatar that can speak. Well, in three years, I'm just going to put my av avatar speaking to yours. I won't even be here. It's also because money is actually hard to come by and it's periodic. You know, there's tons of money, then there's no money. As everyone's just yeah. learned yeah. in 2022, yeah. 2023, yeah. is you Definitely. could have the best Definitely. business on, the, on earth and beg people yeah. and you cannot get money. So I think people are scarred. And so they keep this treasury as opposed to reinvesting it because people are so scared of the capital cycle. But this is to my point. The capital cycles are ferocious in crypto. They're yeah. quick. You can make a lot of capital. Then there's no capital. Then there's capital again. This is real-time VC. So businesses yeah. fail, yeah. businesses grow, businesses stall out. It's all there in real time, played out in the drama of Twitter. And that's what it is. And people have to get used to that. And I think the world is going to look more like that, not less like that. And all you have to do yeah. in crypto is one thing, adoption. Yeah. People have to adopt your technology. Yeah. Whether it's the underlying protocol layer or it's the application, yeah. that's all it is. You have one yeah. job is to yeah. do that. And you know, a lot of people try to make complexity out of this space. If you are a blockchain, you have one job. Your one job is to sell block space. You're a block space salesman, and that's yeah. what you do. That's You're no do. different than a cloud compute person. We dress it up differently, but we sell block space. Oh, oh, and we build applications on the block space, that's it. So there's Raul Paul with his expert insights on the impact of crypto and other technologies. As he emphasized, crypto is the investment of a lifetime, and this is our chance to invest in crypto assets such as Bitcoin, which he believes will have a massive impact on the future of finance and technology. Raul also emphasized the huge influence that artificial general intelligence might have on future markets, revealing the chance for individuals to attain substantial wealth through technology. Technology. According to him, everyone should seize opportunities in spite of fast-paced changes and despite uncertainties. He also highlights the transformative potential of blockchain beyond cryptocurrency, envisioning digitalized assets and streamlined processes that will enhance transparency and efficiency in the financial world. Anyway guys, before we go, for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.